Hi there, Chris here with another tutorial for y'all. In this video, we're going to be painting up the PMC Sniper for the new Dark Potential game system. And so, as you can see here, the model has been primed with GW's white primer. And the base has already been sanded and such. And so, as you can see, and we're going to begin with painting the cloak. And so, for the cloak, we're going to start with some olive green from Reaper. Or you could just as easily use Elysian green from GW. And so, we just put a little bit on the palette. And the brush has been uh, left with a little bit of water in it. And it's not quite, you know, sopping wet, but the uh, brush was uh, just a little bit of water just for helping us uh, move the paint along. As you can see, the paint goes on uh, in one coating very nicely, but to get a nice smooth color transition on there or uh, coating, we're going to be applying more than one coat. And you can use acrylic medium for thinning down your paints or water. So as long as your water is uh, nice and clean, it should do just fine. And as you can see, we're just painting the cloak. And then we'll go over again. We thin the paint, uh, paint down quite a bit with some water just so that it flows nice and easily onto the model. Careful when you are priming your models not to over prime as the model does get quite chalky and when you thin your paints down quite a bit uh, it really is quite a pain to uh, get the model and get the colors down nice and smooth. And so to begin our shading process we're going to use Olive Green and Jungle Moss, these are both Reaper colors. You can use the GW equivalents if you need to, if you, that's the paints you're using, or Vallejo colors. And so for the shading, we're going to be using a two brush blend method here. And so basically I've got two brushes in my hands, and one brush I'll lay down some color, and then really quickly with the other brush I will blend that color in. And so we're putting this jungle moss into the crevices of the cloak and then blending the color uh, out towards the uh, raised areas of the cloak. And uh, the cloth is often very fun to uh, go for these nice shadows and such. And uh, you will have to go in an area uh, multiple times possibly. I often find that it's easier to blend the colors when they are thinned down with a little bit of medium or water. I just use water here for this uh, video. And yeah, so we use our fine detail brush to begin the blending process up in the cowl there, just to get some of those little shadows. And it's, at this point too, it is easy to overdo it as well, but just, you know, <laughs> just take your time, you know. <laughs> so you can see here, we just lightly blend the colors back and forth. And of course, the more times you go back and forth, the smoother color, the color transition will be. And so, for our highlighting process, we'll be going back to our olive green and using pale lichen. Now, the pale lichen, uh, it's sort of like nurgling green from GW, but it does have a little bit more of a gray content to it, so it's not an exact match. So, if you want an exact match, yeah, I'd definitely recommend uh, mixing a little Dawnstone into that nurgling color. And it'll come out a little bit closer to what I'm using here. And so the gray is just simply to uh, give this uh, a more of a cloth feel and not so much all the way of a kind of camo green color. As the models are supposed to have kind of a, a ragtag kind of appearance. And so I just wanted simply a large cloth. And the gray just kind of, you know, represents a bit of the uh, f color fading. And so you can imagine that he's hanging out in the... In the elements and his cloth would become quite faded. So next we're moving in with some rainy gray and some jungle moss. Now these will be mixed in a one-to-one -one ratio and this is the base color for the pants. And yeah, I'm pretty sure that's just, yeah, just the pants I use this for. And so again, when we're base coating, we thin it down just a little bit with some water. Just really like dunking your brush into the water and then quickly just kind of giving it a quick snap to pull the excess water off the bristles. And that's usually enough that I use 
for water for just thinning down the paint just a little bit. And so to begin the highlighting on the pants, we're gonna again use a two brush blend method. And so I've made another mix of one to one gray and green. And then we're using the same rainy gray to begin our highlights. And again, we're going kind of going for a worn out appearance on those pants. And that's why we're using gray instead of you know using other greens because we don't want the green to be too vibrant. And so we want more of a worn appearance on the model. As uh, again, you know, he doesn't have the best of equipment or the best resources, and so he's got to make do with what he's got. And as far as well, that's as far as the understanding I have from the background of it. And so, really quickly, we're going to use a give the pants a quick little wash of the Reichlin Flesh Shade from GW. Again, you could just simply use a kind of a um, a red or brown kind of wash, more of a brown color if you want on top of that green. And this is give a bit of a dirt appearance as uh, you know, he's traipsing around in the dirt and such. Next, we move in with some pure black or Abaddon black. Again, if you're using the GW colors. And this is gonna be for the base colors for the one boot and the little am energy discs that are on his belt and his weapon and also his backpack. And I do believe his little chest armor thing. I don't know what that, what it's called, but yeah. <laughs> oh, and his little goggles thingies. Yeah, that's right. His little goggles. His little night vision goggles. And so as you can see, we move in with some earth brown next. And this is for the boot and the uh, holster on his leg and the little straps that are on his gun that are holding his little... His little anti-grav pack, because that weapon is supposed to be really heavy, and so he's got these little energy packs, these little dark energy packs that keep the gun nice and light for him, because he's a big wimp. I don't know. <laughs> he's a sniper, you know, so. And then once those are ready, we come in with some Devlin Mud. And this is very quickly, just a quick shade of that brown area. And the brown, the earth brown, it's more of a... Um, like a dryad bark color if you're using the GW line. And this is just to provide a quick little shadow into those uh, seams. Next, we're using chain mail or iron breaker from GW, but this, or if you're using any kind of other kind of paint line metallics, it's just a simply a uh, mid-tone uh, silver. And this is for the gun and his little belt buckle as well. And again, where you're just using just a tiny bit of water just to thin the paint down. As, uh, you know, it's just to help flow into the model. But because the areas on the model are fairly broad and such, it uh, really doesn't take too much thinning. Next, for the metal areas, we move in with some Bad Ad Black. Or, I can't remember what the heck the new one's called. Null and Oil, there we go. <laughs> This has been applied fairly heavily, just so that it gets nice and dark in the shadows and such on those metal areas. Next, we come in with some Earth Brown and some Golden Highlight from Reaper. And these will be mixed in a one-to-one -one mixture. And we'll be using this mixture alongside Earth Brown as our two blend for the little leather straps in the boot and such. And so as you can see, we're, just, we're getting into smaller and smaller areas. We're using our detail brush to achieve these little two brush blend technique. And those of you that are not, not entirely familiar with the two brush, it's not terribly complicated. Just have two brushes in your hand and <laughs> work fairly quickly. Next, we move in with some tanned skin for the flesh or Arcadian flesh tone if you're using the GW stuff. And as you can see, just lay down a nice little layer of flesh tone all over the fella. Reichland Flesh Shade is next, and this is just applied fairly liberally over the fleshy areas of the model. Not too heavy. You can see there it kind of went kind of a little too heavy on the hand, but often you want to pick out those little details in the hand, like the tendons and the knuckles and such. And also the face you want to try and get in that mouth and the chin area. And so just very deliberately applying that wash around. And then to highlight, we come in with some tan flesh and some fair skin. 
And again, these will be two brush blended onto the model. And so once we have it laid out on our palette, we just simply take a little bit on our model, almost kind of like drawing uh, where the highlight will go. And then we blend across the muscles. And so you can see here on this tricep area, we just come in really quickly and it's kind of an upward down, up and down motion on that tricep. For the forearm, it's kind of an, on a diagonal trying to get those uh, highlights to blend and such. And so, and then leaving just a little bit of that uh, fair skin, just at like the elbow joint and the top of the muscle, just to create that really nice contrast on the flesh tones. And so next, we come in with some pure black and some rainy gray. The rainy gray and the pure black will be used for highlighting the boots and the little energy disc things. I don't know what they're called, I forget. <laughs> Matt told me and I completely blanked. <laughs> and again, we're using the two brush blend to achieve this. Could just as easily have used a, a uh, retarder to achieve these effects, but uh, or you could just simply add layered the highlights on as well. Some of these really small areas probably would have been better to just uh, layer the highlights on, but I find that uh, with a two brush, once you start to get into the little groove at all, you can achieve what you want on small little areas really quickly, especially once we get down to like the little lenses and stuff. It's really easy to quickly blend those colors and just kind of quickly get a little highlight going on. And yeah. And so it was kind of like a non-metallic metal effect that was going for on the black, but with a really minimal highlights because I wanted the uh, equipment to retain a very dark appearance. And so I just wanted just the edges just picked out. And so we're back with chain mail. And again, this is just to quickly layer in a highlight on the gun and the buckle. As you can see here. And we're not blending any kind of colors on you. But with the metallics, you know, like when you're blending the metallics, I really never really noticed uh, a difference between dry brushing, layering. Well, layering you can see, but, uh, or blending, like wet blending the uh, metallics in together because, again, it's just the nature of the metallics and how they refract light. And so I wouldn't really worry myself when not. Often dry brushing is really the way to go with metallics, but metallics it gets really quite messy. And so, and because we've already brought up all these other little areas up to a finished standard, um, we're not going to be uh, doing any kind of dry brushing here. And so next, fire red. This will be for or and sun yellow. <laughs> I forgot two colors. And so this will be for the little um, indicator light that is on his sniper scope. Not sure why a sniper scope would have little blinking lights on it, but it's going to happen. And so just the red and the yellow are enough to quickly achieve that kind of like glowing gem-like effect on the model. And so next we move in with some golden highlight. And this is going to be layered on to the brown areas and just very, very carefully. And here I'm using my number zero brush for just quickly laying in these... Uh, sharp sharp little highlights into the uh, raised areas of the uh, leather and on the uh, straps on the gun as well really very carefully just just very minimal next we move in with some sapphire blue or you could use cantor blue from gw and these are just the beginning for the little energy discs I'm going to have to remember what the heck these things are called. <laughs> and so, yeah. Really quickly, we just move around. And just, we could go for some object source lighting, but I didn't really want to take up too much time. As we're just bringing this guy up to a, uh, a high tabletop standard. And so next is True Blue. Or Techless Blue from GW. And really quickly, we're just laying this in really just just like a dot almost we're doing almost like a, a gem effect so we're highlighting uh, along the bottom part of the little inside those little areas they have almost like a little nubby of uh, like a little 
spherical shape to them and so we're just applying that color into the uh, into the bottom part of it kind of going for like a light gem effect next we come in with some surf aqua and this is going to serve as our final highlight for these blue areas so once we get it onto the palette we're not really thinning these ones down too much because we don't want it flowing all over the place and so just really quick we're just putting just the tiniest little dot into those areas being extra extra careful <laughs> and this just gives us our little like little indicator and they kind of have a kind of a light source or you know like a gem effect and then really quickly again we're coming in with the goggles we're coming in with that sapphire blue and then our mid-tone blue and then the surf aqua color and again we're highlighting the bottom portions of it and so the cloak it needed some some dirtying up making it kind of worn and so we're going to come in and we're going to thin down Reichland flesh shade with some water and you can see the brush had a fairly heavy load of water in it so it's almost like a one-to-one -one mixture of uh, the shade and water and when we're we're laying this in and we're drawing the brush strokes uh, towards the bottom edge of the cloak just so that it pulls up a little heavier at the bottom and then by the time you get to the front the back side should be dry and so then you can kind of come in and quickly start layering in again and it, it, it takes a bit of playing but you can quickly bring that dirt appearance upwards and that'll be it once we allow that to dry finish the base and it'll be ready to go hope you enjoyed this video any questions or comments feel free to leave them below thank you for watching happy wargaming